Good. I see that you made this now into a neutral oxygen. Why is that now neutral? What's the arrow that shows why that oxygen has become neutral? Right. Originally, it looked like you might have left out this arrow here, but we need this to explain why this is becoming neutral. And now we've got back off sulfuric acid. The sulfuric acid here turned out just to be a catalyst, because we regenerated it at the end. Oftentimes, sulfuric acid is used as a catalyst. Why is sulfuric acid such a useful catalyst? Because the hydrogen sulfate is not nucleophilic, so we don't need to worry about it competing in our reactions. It just donates a proton and then doesn't interfere with the rest of the reaction. It's important then to learn the structure of sulfuric acid so we can draw mechanisms with that. We've seen, hopefully we've seen many examples now. If you do your main reaction and the product of the main reaction is a positive charge, you usually need to deprotonate to get rid of that positive charge. You're not done until you've deprotonated and gotten rid of that positive charge. And now that finally gives us this product. Our starting material here was the epoxide. We saw that the epoxide would not react just with water. Water is not a good enough nucleophile. But when we activated the epoxide with the sulfuric acid, then the water was able to attack it. When you're ready, what type of functional groups did we produce here? What type of functional group is this on the left? And this on the right? So now we've seen a way to make what's called a diol. In fact, this is an adjacent diol in the sense that we have the alcohols on two adjacent carbons. This is a way to get OHs on two adjacent carbons. Is that the final product? Now this is our final product. How do we know that we can stop now? Because there's no more charges. As long as there's charges, nature wants to keep working to get rid of the charges. But when the charges are gone, that's oftentimes the place that we can stop. That's why it's so important to always ask, what are the charges? This could be called a diol. The name your instructor uses for this is a glycol. We can see then that this reaction with epoxide is a good way to make a, a glycol. Right. If you want to make a glycol then in a synthesis problem, what's good starting materials? An epoxide, water, and acid. If you want to make a glycol in a synthesis, a good approach is an epoxide, water, and acid. Now a lot of people wouldn't think of this though. Suppose that a person saw that they were trying to use any acid, though. Would you have well, it should be a strong acid. In fact, sulfuric acid okay. is the best way to go. There's other acids that might work, but sulfuric acid is very good because it's strong and its conjugate is not nucleophilic. So this is generally what we're going to stick with here. This would be better than say hydrochloric acid because chloride is nucleophilic and that might compete with the water to attack. So it's better to use something that's not nucleophilic in this process. Hydrochloric acid is not a good. It's not a great acid, no. It, it, you would probably still get a decent yield if you used hydrochloric, but probably not as good as if you used sulfuric, because the chloride would compete in the reaction. Since all we want this to be is just a catalyst and not a nucleophile, it's best to stick with the sulfuric acid. But it could be other acids that has like... Um, it could be other acids. However, in the introductory course, this is likely the only one you're likely to see okay. used here. I think this is the one that was used in the notes. Uh, actually, in the notes, your instructor didn't even say, oh, well, at first your instructor didn't even show the acid. What your instructor wrote was this. Your instructor used this reagent. But it's important to realize that this reagent really just means a strong acid plus water. Okay. This reagent just means a strong acid plus water. And if you wanted to conceptualize it, it would be easiest to imagine the strong acid was sulfuric acid. If we used H3O plus, we'd get the same exact product as if we used these reagents, because H3O plus really is the same as these reagents. This just means water plus a strong acid. That's not going to compete with the reaction. We were saying if you want to make a glycol, a good way to do that is the epoxide plus the acidic water. However, a lot of people might not think of that, and here's why. First of all, where did we get this alcohol group? 
well, we got this alcohol group from this oxygen, right? However, notice that this oxygen doesn't look like an alcohol yet because it hasn't gained the proton. So it's important to realize that even though this doesn't look like an alcohol, it will look like an alcohol after it gets protonated. Also, where did this oxygen come from? What molecule brought in this oxygen? What molecule delivered this oxygen to the monoxide? The water. That is, in order to make the alcohol here, we had to attack with water. But a lot of people wouldn't think of that because this doesn't look like water anymore. They wouldn't realize this came from water because it doesn't look like water anymore because it's deprotonated. Very often it's hard to remember where something came from because it has deprotonated. Remember that before it attacked, this had one more proton. Mm -hmm. So it's important to see that a good way to make alcohols is by using water, even though they don't look like water after they attack because they deprotonate. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. This reaction is going to be very similar. Let's go through the whole mechanism for this reaction. Well, let's make sure that we have the right intermediates, and then we can decide what to do with that other component. So I don't need to worry about where I put that right now. Uh, we'll yeah, like that. I see what you're saying. Well, this hasn't participated in the reaction yet, so we're not going to write anything about it. We'll just, uh, we'll just assume that it's still around. Those are good intermediates. Now we have to decide what the next reaction will be. I'm not sure where goes again. Who is our reactive atom now? Of the species that we now have in solution, who's the most reactive atom? What's an atom that we especially want to focus on? Looks like you're not sure? Well, it's the charges that tell us what to focus on. Things with charges are the atoms we want to focus on. And that's the reason why the, the charges are the most important part of any picture. Okay. Well, which atoms have charges now? 
That's right. In fact, we have two oxygens with charges. However, we know that this oxygen isn't as reactive as it looks because it's resonance stabilized. So this is the reactive oxygen that we want to focus on over here. Now, we know that positive charges can make things into good leaving groups or good electrophiles. Well, is this oxygen now going to be a leaving group or an electrophile? Mm -hmm. Leaving group because, again, of that full octet idea. It's the atom that's adjacent to this oxygen that's going to be the electrophile. Remember that positive charges really only make carbocations into electrophiles, otherwise they make things into leaving groups. Well, then who's going to be the electrophilic atom? This carbon here. So should this carbon be at a head or a tail? Uh, head. If this is going to be a leaving group, then we need to show an arrow like this to show that this is going to leave. 